Hi there, this is Valentine and in this video, which is part of the series and in case you missed the previous one, make sure you start right here. We'll discuss on how to integrate Newman in Jenkins in order to run Postman API tests. As in the previous videos, we'll have a contest right at the end, so make sure you watch the entire video and maybe you will be one of the lucky winners. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi there, this is Valentine and welcome to another tutorial on Postman, the RESTful API tool. This video is part of a series and in case you haven't seen the previous ones, I will put you a link right here on top of the video so you can just start with the first one. Otherwise, welcome back and let's continue with the next step of our process and that is integrating everything in Jenkins. So, as you remember from the previous videos, we managed to get Newman up and running on our local machine and managed to execute a collection. And now we want to do the exact same thing, but this time on Jenkins and to get things started there. Now, I already have a Jenkins installation locally on my machine. I'm gonna start by first creating a new job and I will explain a bit while I'm doing that. So the first thing that we want to check is to see if node if npm and if newman are all installed on the machine running Jenkins. And the simplest way to test if they're all installed is to create a new job. And in this case, I will create a freestyle project and let's call this REST API test. And actually we're testing the HTTP bin endpoint. So it's gonna be HTTP bin REST API test. The name of the job itself doesn't really matter. I'm gonna click down OK. And once this has been saved, I'll be able to configure the job. So the first thing would be to jump to the build tab or you can just scroll down below and I'll be adding a new build step. And that build step is simply executing a shell and in my case, Jenkins is running on a Linux machine and I'll be using shell. So for that, let's test as we test in the terminal, something like node dash dash version pm dash dash version and Newman dash dash version. Let's save the configuration. And I will start to build by clicking the build now button. It already executed. So I can easily see the console output. And I will see here that I have node installed, I have npm installed and I have new one installed. In case you do not have this, all three tools installed on your machine, you need to first install them before proceeding with the next steps. And the installation as a process should be pretty similar to the one on your own machine. Now, if Jenkins is under your control, so the machine running Jenkins is under your control, you will have to do the same steps. Otherwise, if you have a system administrator or something like that, get in touch with them and tell them what are your requirements and that you need to have Newman installed on your machine. Command to install Newman has been shown in the previous video. It's simple, npm install minus g Newman and installing node and npm should be pretty standard on any operating system. Now, if you manage to have all the three running, let's continue with the next step. And the next step would be to actually run a collection. So I will go back and configure the job. And in the build section, I will delete all this because I don't need it anymore. And I will simply write new and run and a collection. So let's grab the same collection that we have used previously. So 
I'll post your link in the description. And between double quotes, I'll paste the link. And now when I run this job again, you'll see it takes a bit longer. And this is the way how everything looks like. So pretty similar as with the terminal, Newman will download the collection and start executing the tests. And when everything succeeds, everything looks good. So far so good. Now what we should do is to get our collection with an API key, as we did in the previous video. So I still have the link. So let's go back to configure the project. Then we'll replace this with the other style. So in this case, I'm using the Postman API to retrieve this collection, which belongs to my account, providing this API key. And then in the same way, I'm providing an environment as well. And the environment can be retrieved pretty similarly. And I've shown you last time the new documentation on how to do that. So this is everything that I have here. Let me save that. And rerun this build. So everything seems to be running successfully. Now the value of Jenkins comes when we actually have builds that fail. So let's go back to Postman, change this collection and make sure that our execution in Jenkins actually fails. So I will simply edit a test here. That is code will be 201. So let's just give this another try. And now you will see that the build is failing. And in order to see exactly what has gone wrong, you will have to go visit the console output and you will be given here information regarding which assertion actually failed. Now, the problem with this approach is that when you have a lot of assertions and a lot of requests, when something fails, it's a bit inconvenient to go and check the console and see exactly what happened there. And this is why a lot of the tools that run in Jenkins generate a report that then Jenkins can understand and you will be able to access a report by using the interface. So let me show you exactly what I mean by that report. So we're going to go back to the job configuration. And while this is loading, we'll go to the documentation of Newman again. And one of the important things that you can do with Newman is to configure reporters. And there are different kinds of reporters that we can use. And for our case, we are going to specify the CLI reporter. And this is what you get by default. But when you specify other reports, the CLI report won't be shown anymore. So we'll, so we'll specify that explicitly. And we'll also work with a JUnit report, which is usually used for Java projects. But this is something that most of the time Jenkins can understand out of the box and publish. And Newman can generate such a JUnit report and Jenkins can show it. So this is why we're going to specify CLI and JUnit as, as reporters. So let's configure the job again. And now you'll see this big string here with a lot of parameters. If you don't like it like that, and I personally don't, what you can do is to introduce a slash here. And after this line, you can just enter a slash. So now we're going to specify the new parameter and that will be reporters space CLI comma and JUnit 
Make sure you do not leave any space in between CLI and JUnit. So not like that. We always don't need any spaces. And here is just one space. So it's important to specify it exactly this way, not something like reporters equals or anything else. So reporters space CLI and any other reports that you have comma separated. And there's one additional thing that we need to configure. And if you go back to the Newman documentation, what we're interested in is specifying where should this report be saved. So if we're looking here at the JUnit XML reporter options, you will see here that there's an additional option that we can specify. And this is the dash dash reporter dash JUnit just export and we can specify a path. If you don't specify a path, the report will be saved anyway, somewhere automatically in the numeral folder and with a given name, but we want to have a specific one. So for that reason, I'm gonna type in Newman. This will be the folder where the report will be saved, slash, and say report.xml. So once again, we specify the reporters, CLI and JUnit, comma separated, and then we are specifying for the JUnit report where it should be saved. And that will be saved inside the workspace. So let's first hit the save button and quickly rerun this. And now we still have our failing tests and we still don't have a lot of information what exactly has gone wrong. And for that, we actually have to go to workspace. And inside here, Newman, you will find this report XML that we generated. And by looking at it, you will automatically understand what has gone wrong. No, I'm just kidding. This is just a file that has been generated. You should know where it is so that in case something doesn't work, you know where to find it. But otherwise, uh, you will probably not take another look at it in the future. And by doing so, we're gonna go back to configure. And we'll actually configure this job to publish this report. So human generated this report it saved a file somewhere, but Jenkins still has no idea that such a file has been generated. So we need to configure Jenkins a bit more to understand about it. And for that, we're gonna go to post build actions. And this is something that's happening after the build, after the execution itself is completed. And this is right before the build. This is right after the build. And we'll be able to add here a new post build action. And the post build action we are actually interested in is this publish JUnit test result report. And once you open that, you will be asked where is the path to this report. So I'm gonna say here newman slash report.xml. If you specify something that doesn't exist, sometimes you will get an error, but let me just check it. Okay, yeah, so if I don't specify something and I click somewhere else, Jenkins will detect that the path uh, isn't there. So this is why it's kind of useful to first generate a report to make sure that the path is the right one and then go ahead and create a post build action. Great. So let's save it again and rerun the job to see how it looks like now. So now if we go, let's just reload the page once. If we go to the last build, we'll be able to see here that a test result has been added. And if you click the test result, 
you will get information about failed tests and you can see exactly which is the test that failed and what exactly happened in the execution so we'll get more technical details about a test and if you actually run it a couple of times and I'll do it right now okay so let's try and get this fixed again And after a couple of runs, you will automatically get this graph here. So it will show you how many tests have failed from the previous builds. And down below are the number of assertions that you have. And then you have the number of builds. So the, you'll see here build number 8, number 12. So now in the build number 12, we don't have any errors anymore. Uh, you will always have the possibility of inspecting the latest test result to see what happened there. What are the tests that were sent and you will see all the requests that we have and stuff like that so this is what this report actually does so it after the test execution it generates a report that then jenkins can understand otherwise you will still have the possibility of manually looking at what newman is outputting directly from the cli reporter and this is another way on how you can check if everything is working properly great there's one more thing that human can do for us and that is to generate an html report as well and let's now have another look at the human documentation again to see how we can configure an html reporter so that will be pretty easy to configure and you will see here that the parameter for the reporters is html so we'll just simply have to add that and we'll need to configure a path for for the html reporter as well and that can be quite easy to do we're gonna use reporter dash xml dot dash export so let's go to build again we are going to add a new reporter, comma HTML. Then we are going to configure this reporter as well. Too many dashes here. And the path that we are going to use is again in the Newman folder. And I'm going to call it report.html. And this time we're going to do it in one step. And here at post build actions, I'm gonna select the post build action called publish HTML reports. This is an extra plugin that you need to install in Jenkins. It's called published HTML reports in case you do not have it in the drop down. And as with a lot of things in Jenkins, there's a plugin that does everything. So I'll select publish HTML reports. I'm gonna add a report. is to report.html and I'll quickly check if there are any other options I should know about it first looks good let's give it a try and see later if something fails and now if you restart the page you will be able to see that a new element appeared on this page and that is this HTML report and if you click it you will be taken to the HTML report that has been generated usually it looks much nicer there's probably a temporal bug on human or something like that um, but this is the way it should work more or less just wanted to mention that you have the possibility of generating your own custom html reports maybe you want them with some of them with your logo or something like that and there are information here in the documentation on how you can create a custom template and you can also specify here a custom template path which can be then loaded and found by Newman.
Great, so we've already managed to configure the JUnit and the HTML report. Both of them are working and being displayed. So what I wanted to show you additionally is how to work if you have your collection and your environment saved in a Git repository. And for that matter, I created here a Git repository, which contains a Postman collection and this environment. And we are going to go over on how to configure them in Jenkins. And it's going to be pretty easy, I promise. So I'm going to use the exact same job that we have used so far. I'm going to go to configure. And meanwhile, let me just grab the address of this repository. You will find links as always in the description, so make sure you check that out. And then in the job configuration, I will go to source code management. I will select git, I'll paste the git address here and this will check to master. And now instead of running this remote collection, it's going to remove that quickly. So everything will stay exactly the same, but I'll replace it with the local file. So once Jenkins checks out this git repository all the files in the git repository will be available here and they are on the first level so this is why i can directly reference them and i'm gonna do it like this uh, again between double quotes but in case you have any folders or something like that like tests then just do test slash and then postman blah 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 so this is the way it goes the same goes with the environment. Always copy and paste so that you do not make any errors while typing. So we're running this collection, this local collection with this environment. The reporters and everything will stay the same. Well, always, so all I have to do is click the save button and rerun this collection to make sure that it works. Now the job completed successfully, we can have a look at the console to make sure that everything worked as we expected. You will see here that Jenkins cloned this repository, had access to everything and then Newman executed with the exact same command as you see here. Everything worked out perfectly and the job is green. Okay, so that's about it. Now let's get started with the contest. I promised in the beginning of this video that we're gonna have a contest. You can win an online course on Postman, which is a collection of videos with over 10 hours of tutorials explaining different features of Postman from building requests, writing tests, doing continuous integration with different continuous integration servers, explaining JavaScript basics and much, much more. So if you want to win access to this online course, what you have to do is to post a screenshot of your Jenkins installation running this kind of tests. So if you make a screenshot from your own Jenkins installation with exactly what I see on this page, you configuring API test and running, seeing here the execution or from the CLI or seeing an HTML report, that will be totally fine. Make a screenshot of that, upload a photo somewhere where you can get a link and then post the link in the comment section below. Otherwise, I'm looking forward to your feedback. Let me know if everything worked out for you, if you like this tutorial and if it helped you configure Postman tests in your Jenkins continuous integration server. Thank you for watching. Give this video a thumbs up and see you next time.